Hello, Michael here again with another Render Man tutorial. This week I'm going to be talking about blockers. Uh, first off, sorry this is a little bit late, I was sick last week and I pretty much lost my voice. Um, you still might be able to hear it just a little bit, um, but I'm pretty good now and I'm going to do this tutorial really quick about blockers. Um, so I've set up a scene here, I've just got a simple plane as a background. Um, I've got an area light, uh, just your standard um, wrist area light there um, and I've got a ball here on the left which has got a Pixar Disney shader um, I've set the um, specularity to all the way up and the uh, roughness to 0.1 um, and then on the with the green ball on the right uh, it is the same color value um, but the specularity is set to off and the roughness is set to 1.0 uh, just for your reference here is a render of the scene um, so that's what it would look like before I add any blockers in um, so why don't I add a blocker in uh, well I can do that really easily by going up to the render man shelf here and clicking the geo area blocker um, now this blocker is an RMS um, tool so it's not a hundred percent compatible uh, from my understanding with the RAS lights uh, so it can't do everything uh, that it could do with uh, the Redman Reyes light uh, but because they're retiring Reyes in 21 I'm not going to go into uh, much of those features uh, I'm just going to give you some tips um, to get you going here and also I'll show you some workarounds as well um, that you can use just using standard geometry as blockers um, the first shape that you're given here is the portal um, and basically what it does it pipes any light that's connected to this through this opening and shoots it out uh, this can be really useful if you're using an environment light um, but I'll just quickly show you what it how it works with um, this light first um, but the problem is it's not connected so how do we do that well there's two ways, one way never works for me, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway um, you can go to select your light, go to your attribute editor go to blockers and right click and hold and then you should be able to select your uh, light blocker that you just placed into the scene I can't because it never works uh, but we can get around this by going to your hypershade editor which is that button there and I'm just going to maximize that and then we'll go to the shelf here and we'll click lights and then we'll right click and hold and click graph network and that's going to get uh, the network for our standard area light when then we can middle mouse click and drag on our blocker and bring it into the scene here um, and then what we want to do is get to our bound co shader on our light and we want to plug our map into the bound co shader you'll actually need to open that up and you want to plug it into bound co shader one a uh, zero and then that should make it visible to our light why not take a render and see yeah, as you can see, that's done it. Uh, as you cannot see, now you can see it's done it. Um, so basically, what's happening is um, instead of that light affecting the entire area like it was here, um, it's actually being uh, piped through this portal that we've created. Um, so we can move the portal anywhere in the scene, uh, but it has to have a physical line of sight to the light source. So. For instance, if I was to move it down here and face it this way, there's no light actually entering the back side of that portal, so it doesn't really work. However, if I turn it around and face it this direction, because the light is actually behind the portal, it will shoot through that direction, and you will see it works like that. Um, so that's why it works really well with environment shader, because an environment shader is coming, you know, it's 360 degrees around um, your entire scene. Okay, say for example, we've got a scene that has a room with a window. For, uh, for example, um, we've got an environment shader around the outside of it, which I'll just drop in now really quick. Um, if we quickly add an environment image to it, if we want to have the camera here, so we've got the, um, the window here in view, um, but we need the camera to sort of be pointing through this uh, wall here, so I've deleted the wall from the geometry. Um, if we rendered it, um, we'd run into the problem that the um, wall behind us, behind the camera, um, would be allowing light to get through. 
So not only has the scene been lit through this window, it's been lit through the, the big missing wall behind the camera. So if we use a light blocker as a portal, um, we can actually fix this. And now you can see the light is only coming through the window, whereas before it was coming from behind us as well. Uh, so that can be really useful for controlling your light sources in a scene like that um, with an aerial light. Okay, so aside from portals, we can also use gobos. Um, now I'm not really going to use I don't really use gobos that much uh, in my scenes, um, and because it would appear that the RMS feature set is not present for the RIS lights, uh, specular, specular attenuation, diffuse attenuation don't really work. You want to control those with your actual light source itself. Um, but you can still use it as a blocker. Um, if I render this, it still creates a cast shadow um, onto the scene. So yeah, that can be very useful in certain circumstances. However, you're only getting a 2D, two-dimensional two flat plane. Um, which may be what you're after, but um, there might be some more uses for you if you were able to actually able to create some geometry. Uh, something that, say, had some unusual shapes to it. So why don't we get rid of our blocker uh, and create a torus. I'm just going to lower that geometry a little bit so I can smooth shade it. Um, now. If I was to render this, obviously you'd be able to see the torus in the scene, which wouldn't make a very good blocker because it'd be completely visible. So why don't we just create a Pixar Disney shader on it, go to the Hypershade editor and then grab that one that I just connected. And we're going to change that name to Blocker. Um, and we're going to reduce the specularity to zero and we're going to increase the roughness to 100, uh, to 1.0. The reason we do that is we don't want our blockers to be reflecting light um, up which because it would create an unusual effect you might want to do that for some weird reason but um for this example we won't now uh if we render it here just for the sake of argument uh, you'll see you'd obviously get a big blue torus in the scene which is not 100 percent useful uh, but if we go to uh if we select our blocker texture uh sorry our blocker material and then we go to attributes render man uh Sorry, no, you want to select our torus shape, go to attributes, render man, and visibility settings. Um, and that adds, adds some extra um, uh, options to your geometry. And you see you get camera visibility here. So we can actually deselect that and re render. And what it does is it creates a. Um, it creates a blocker in the scene essentially so you can see it's creating a cast shadow the lights filtering through the center of the torus and uh, it's actually still reflecting some light and there's um something i forgot to do would be to actually change the color to black because if you've got a uh, a blue diffuse object it's still going to reflect light um, even though it's completely non-specular so let's render that again and there you go um, so you've got a blocker in the scene it's three-dimensional and um, yeah, and you can do whatever you want for it with it. You can animate it, you can move it through your scene. Um, these are really cool when you use them in uh, scenes with atmosphere. So yeah, if you've seen my atmosphere tut tutorial, uh, you might want to add these into an atmospheric lighting scenario and you might get some cool effects. Or you could obviously apply this attribute like I did with this Taurus to uh, animated geometry. So you could have some moving shadows in some atmosphere which would look really cool and spooky. Um, there is one final thing that way you, that you can control a blocker. Um, so we're going to create a simple plane. It's going to reduce its poly count to one by one. And then we're going to go back to our blocker um, material and we're going to assign it to that um, plane. Now, obviously if I rendered this now, you'd just have the same effect, except it would just be a square, but we can actually map a uh, texture to the presence node on the blocker material. So in the Hypershade Editor, if you, if you right click and graph the network for your blocker, then go down to presence and click this little uh, chessboard thing here and go click file. 
uh, we're going to plug in a file that I have already created. Hey, look at that. That's a cool channel, right? Ah, yes. Obviously, you want to uh, select the uh, plane, go to attributes, go to render man, go to visibility settings, and set the camera visibility off. So we just have it casting a shadow now. So as you can see, uh, it's casting some weird shadow. It doesn't look like anything at the moment, but um, because it's too far away from the light, the the um, shadow is uh, being made to look very soft. So I could either uh, move it close to the ground, where that way we'd get a much sharper shadow, um, or inversely, I could create a smaller light source, which will sharpen our shadows as well. And I'm actually planning to talk about this a little bit more in a future tutorial. Um, just some basic lighting um, setups that you can do. So you've got a little bit more control over your shadows. So there you go. We get a much sharper image being um, broadcast out of that. And that's another way that you could create a blocker um, that's casting a shadow. Uh, that's not actually physically, uh, you know, creating a shadow just with its own geometry, but it's actually using a UV map to do so. Um, and obviously with this uh, image that I've used, it's only got alpha values. So uh, if you look at it in the Hypershade editor, um, you can see this image preview here. The black areas are letting light through and the white areas are blocking light, um, as you can see in the preview there as well. So that's another way. You could get some much more complex shapes out of your light blockers that way. Um, and yeah, it would hopefully lead to some interesting results in your renders. Um, so hopefully that's helped. Um, I know you, some of you might have been expecting to use the standard uh, light blocker there. Unfortunately, I've never really used it a whole lot in any of my uh, setups. I've actually used this method a lot more um, because I find that you get a little bit more control out of, um, out of your geometry this way so hopefully these tips have been useful to some of you guys um, if you liked this tutorial please click like um, help other people find it um, and if you haven't done so already uh, maybe subscribe because i do a new video every week unless i'm sick obviously uh, but yeah thanks for watching everyone uh, we'll catch you next week uh, with a new fresh tutorial and until then happy rendering